phobias. <laughs> I wrote one of my first uh, horror books, my first mass market. It's my, I think my third mass market book was called The Birds and the Bees. And it was literally about the birds and killer bees like that one. <laughs> and my phobia is birds. <laughs> I don't have issues with bees. Actually, I'm overcoming bees as a, oh, thanks, Clutch Cat. Yeah, it's a cute little bee. Should I put it back up? Yeah, he's a cute. See, see, you find these things when you're researching, right? I'm supposed to be writing in the writing sprint, but I went down the research hole. There he is. He can watch us. There he is. Just hanging out. Well, he's my bee overlord. <laughs> be prepared. <laughs> now we're going to have all kinds of crazy bee jokes, aren't we? <laughs> but yeah, I'm just trying to find a uh, Canadian uh, issues. You do have the phobias. <laughs> but he just looks like a giant toy. He's not going to hurt anyone. He's just chilling on the... He's sitting on my microphone, trying to give me uh, advice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I have to think of a good monster for my uh, story. But yeah, so I was just looking through the natural predators... To Ontario, because that's where I am. You love bees, cannot handle the wasp. Yeah. Yeah, that's a yellow jacket, I think. It was under the uh, what? Canadian yellow jacket. That's what that little guy whose face is. He's a yellow jacket. They're worse than wasps. Uh, yellow jacket is the common name in North America for predatory social wasps. <laughs> So, how's your predatory social wasp phobia going today? <laughs> oh, they're up to one inch. Where's it found? Everywhere. <laughs> All females are capable of stinging. A hollow stinger at the rear of the wasp's body injects venom when it penetrates the skin. Several thousand people are stung by these venomous insects in Canada each year. And these stings can be quite painful. In some cases, severe re allergic reactions to the venom have caused death. Unlike bees, wasps can sting more than once. Yeah, man. I, uh, I've been stung by these little assholes myself, and it sucks. I think the last time I was stung by one was about maybe three years ago. I was in someone's backyard. Um, yeah, we all like the cute little bumblebees because they, they make our honey. These guys are assholes. You know wasps are at Oh, my God, there's a tick. Oh, they have pictures of all these horrible things. What the hell's a moth caterpillar? Apparently, that's not good. Is it? Why is it under predators? Hang on. What? What? Ten most feared Ontario animals and insects. Yeah, there's the black bear. Oh, he's so cute. But I can't do, I wish I could show you, this is still that same page where it won't let me show you uh, the fisher, the coyote. So what's this moth, Atomeris Io, where you find it, southern parts of Ontario and Quebec. What is the Io moth caterpillar? They're colorful. Well, why is it dangerous? Okay, here we go. As the larvae develop, they lose their original orange color and will turn bright green and urticating or whatever, which essentially gives them many spines. These stinging spines have a painful venom that is released with the slightest touch. Some people describe the feeling of touching these spines as similar to a bee sting. This condition is known as uricism. It's the name given to injuries caused by marth lava. How can they be avoided? Leave them alone. <laughs> That's what it says. And this thing looks cool, though. I'll, I'll put that picture up and get rid of the hornet so you guys won't be disturbed by the bee anymore. Okay. So let me just get this. 
So get rid of Mr. B or Mrs. B. I'm not sure. The yellow, the Canadian yellow jacket. And uh, okay, there's, oh, there we go. Okay, look, check out this caterpillar moth thing. Like, how is that going to kill you? <laughs> I don't know if you guys are still here, but this is that caterpillar I was, the, the larva that I was just reading to you about. Can you believe that thing is deadly? Like this thing... That thing will get you. So just leave them alone. What do you do if you're bitten? It's just temporary discomfort, but not serious harm. Wash the area gently with soap and water and allow it to air dry. Put on a paste of baking soda and water. But it looks... <laughs> disturbs you more than the wasp I guess because we'd never see it because it hides on the leaf right <laughs> that's but look look those little spine things it's like uh it looks like a video game or something like I probably would never think that thing is scary I'd be like ew I'm not gonna touch it because it's like a gross caterpillar thing but yeah let's stay away from that star-spangled caterpillar man because it's gonna get you <laughs> That will the prickly bits. Uh, or, okay, let let me get the ob. I have to move the obs over to read the thing again. Okay, as the larva develop, they lose their original orange color and will turn bright green, and urticating, which essentially gives them many spines. So those are the little spines, I guess, when it gets mature. These stinging spines have a painful venom that is released with the slightest touch. So yeah, if you touch that thing, it's gonna um, get ya. Some people describe the feeling of touching these spines as similar to a bee sting. This condition known as ear... I'm learning words today. Aerosism <laughs> is the name given to injuries caused by moth larvae in humans. Tomato worms... <laughs> it's too fine with the word prompts. <laughs> What's it? Okay, now I got to go look at what a tom tomato worm is. I probably have. I, well, I know I've seen one. Well, you don't. You're afraid of them because uh, you only see half of one when you eat a tomato. Is that? <laughs> oh, those hornworm things. Oh, yeah. I see what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, those things. Those things are horrible. I, those things scare me more than that thing we just were looking at. Instead of one bee sting, you have 3,000. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> no, I'm not a big worm fan either, uh, I have to say. Okay, now I want to try and capture this other one. Did I save it? Hang on. I don't think I saved it yet. Did I save the horn, this stupid thing? Okay. Let's go check out. This thing looks like the caterpillar, that tomato thing I'm going to put up. Looks like that caterpillar in, uh, okay, let me get rid of this one so we don't, or maybe I'll just make them small so we can compare and contrast the horrificness of them all. This is a horror channel, so <laughs> you've been warned. <laughs> I am a horror writer. <laughs> I like the creepy, weird shit. Doesn't mean I want to play with these things or even see them in real life, but <laughs> we're doing our research. <laughs> okay, so there's... Ah, uh, there it is. The tomato worm. <laughs> yeah, I hear you on that. Okay, here's your here's your tomato worm. <laughs> there you go. There's your nice big disgusting oh my god yikes Ugh. is that the one you were thinking of 
<laughs> there we go. There, there's your big juicy worm with the little horns on its head. <laughs> yeah, there we are. There we are. There's your worm. <laughs> Oh my god, worms everywhere. We got worms. Yes, that abomination. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll have them roll around in a bunch of yucky worms, but but that that tomato worm isn't a danger. How do I identify? I think they just what are harm worm? Okay. Hang on, I got to I got too much stuff. I got to move that over to that monitor. Okay. But hornworms are just gross looking. They're not actually uh, two main garden pests, the tomato hornworm and the tobacco hornworm. <laughs> tobacco and tomato, to, tomato and tobacco hornworms live in the following lifestyle. Late spring, large adult moths lay eggs on the undersides of foliage, which will hatch within a week. <laughs> the adult moths are easily recognizable. They're called sphinx or hummingbird moths, caterpillar larva, blah, blah, blah. Oh, my God. Hornworms can be up to five inches long. <laughs> yeah, they just eat plants. Yep. They can be five inches. Like, that's, that's a juicy worm, man. Like that, that's a big worm. That's gross. Five inches. That That's, blah. I think most worms get probably longer than that but we just don't look at them ew ew to get rid of the tomato hornworm you just pick it off with your hand <laughs> pick it off with your hand why not we're going for that hornworm ew Okay, I have to share this picture of, what is this? A tobacco hornworm covered with, okay, let, I'll just show you first so you can throw up. All right. Save as. Where am I saving this? Save. 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 Oh, I already saved it. Okay. I think I already have it. Okay, let me see. See if I can add another worm. Uh, there's an. This is the tobacco horn horn worm. <laughs> I can't even talk. I'm so grossed out. The tobacco hornworm <laughs> with parasitic wasp eggs on it. <laughs> so now you got all the horrors in one picture. <laughs> you got your yucky worms. It looks like the worm has eyeballs. Those things look like eyeballs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks. I thought it was rice at first. But apparently it's wasp eggs, so. <laughs> yeah, we can pretend it's rice, but it's not. It's just gross. <laughs> Choosing to believe it's rice. Yeah, and then all those damn yellow jackets will come flying out of that. Oh, uh. <laughs> I'm on the squeak factor with you guys. <laughs> I'm totally like, yuck. <laughs> but we're supposed to write what scares us, right? You know, <laughs> isn't that horror 101 is write what scares you. Uh, they're not scaring me. They're just gross. Uh, but if I if one was on me, I'd, I'd, I'd probably, no. I, you can just imagine their little sticky legs, like just crawling up your arm and blah, as they inch up. I remember when I was a little kid, I used to like to catch the caterpillars and it might have been one of those 
one of these things. But they'd be all like black and red and stuff. And, and you could pet them and they'd be like so furry and soft. They were like really nice. But every once in a while, it would not, it'd be like a hard prickle. So I'm wondering, you know, if I was getting poisoned by these caterpillars when I was a kid, because I didn't know any better. And I always caught bugs. I even caught bees and stuff. But yeah, it's gross. <laughs> <laughs> it's all gross oh my god all right one of your biggest irrational fears is an insect crawling in your ear <laughs> yeah i have that or up your nose call them woolly worms or roly polies oh we called the roly polies were like the little silver pill bugs that turn like you, you touch them and then they curl into a little ball. I forget what the real names are. Yeah, the woolly worms were nice, but I guess don't pet that one in the bottom there because that woolly worm will like hurt. <laughs> and the others are just gross. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Don't mean to insult you, caterpillars. Don't come haunt me in my sleep. <laughs> well, I guess I'll have to throw some caterpillars in my book just because of this conversation. <laughs> yeah, you grew up in the South. Um, I think they call them pill bugs. So I, my earliest memories... Or when we lived in Missouri. But I'm not sure what the real names are. Are they pill bugs? Yeah, yeah, they're pill bugs. Okay. Okay, here's another disgusting picture I'm going to put up. Oh, they look like cockroaches, but they're not. These guys. Okay, I'll put it. I'll grab the, this picture might be good. Oh, God, I'm going down the rabbit hole. That's a horrible, ugh. This page is so full of gross things. It's showing like cockroaches. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not going to show you a cockroach. Okay, let me see if I can... Uh... Where's my, oh, I got too many screens open now. Okay, let's see what's next. What is, <laughs> it's holding your head in your hands. <laughs> it's like, <"Wah." laughs> Where are we at? Where are we at now? Where's this thing? Yeah, this is what we call roly polies or pill bugs. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. So this is him like half rolled up. You know, so, but the unrolled, there's just too damn many that look like cockroaches. I'm not putting up those pictures. <laughs> you know, they're, they're so tiny. They're, they're, well, you can't see me because my, I blocked my picture. Um, like they're, they're teeny, teeny, tiny, like, like teeny, 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 teeny. Yeah. But yeah, so they used to, like, if you lift up a rock, they're always underneath. But I, my earliest memory is when we lived in Missouri, but then we moved up to Canada after that, and we got them up here a lot. But I haven't dug around rocks in years, so, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, this is a... Uh... Oh, God. There's, no. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just so grossed out by all these pictures. <laughs> this isn't really what I meant to do. <laughs> but hey, we're, we're, we're down the rabbit hole now. We're the bug hole. We're down the bug hole. Okay, let's put him over here. Yeah, man. See, see how inspiring it is. Just going in a bug pit, man. Now you, now we have all the research. We know all our bugs, and now we just gotta use them, right? 
This, okay, here's what it looks like when it's not rolled up. Don't scream. <laughs> it looks like a cockroach, but it's not. But that's when they're not rolled up. And then they roll into these little tiny balls. <laughs> oh, they call them sow bugs too, I guess. Pill bugs and sow bugs. Is it a, now they're saying it might be a potato bug? I oh, know I think potato bugs are different. I used to have to dig potatoes at my grandmother's farm. That's not a potato bug. Yeah, it's hell spawn for sure, man. For sure. <laughs> this is definitely <laughs> it's all of it. Yeah, and the whole crawling in the ear thing, uh, going back up on the chat. Um, I lived in this one place where I got, uh, before I moved here, I lived in a shithole while I was waiting to get into this place. And uh, it had cockroaches and bed bugs. And I'd get an itch in my nose. I actually went to the doctor because I was so freaked out thinking like a bed bug or, or a cockroach had crawled up my nose and was just like hanging out in there, jiggling its legs. And I was like, ugh. But they looked up my nose and they said it wasn't, they didn't see anything. But I'm like, I don't know, to this day, I don't know what the hell that was all about. Oh, <laughs> I know your screen is on my about section. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, let's get rid of these assholes there. It's like, ah. All right, yeah, I was looking for, I wasn't looking for bugs. I just wanted to know what some of the predators in Canada were, and then I ended up down this bug hole. I know. <laughs> Brown spiders crawling up your chest. Ugh. I don't mind spiders as long as they're not crawling up my chest. <laughs> I have to admit, I have held tarantulas a couple times, um, but... I don't know if I would anymore. It is gross. Um, I'm trying to remember, right? Like I was a teenager and I was at some fair. Sorry, I'm just uh, trying to talk and make my face. So I'm not a disembodied voice coming at you. Um, I was at some fair. It was an outdoor fair music festival thing, and, and somebody had a pet tarantula, so I I held out my hand, and they put it on. And, but then it started coming up my arm. <laughs> Take it back. Take it back. I've done that, I think, three different times at various things, trying to be cool. You know, just if you just holding my hand flat, and they put a tarantula in it. But, yeah. Uh, it's yeah <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah too much for me it's way too much for me <laughs> rather have a spider than a snake I guess it depends on the size of the snake when I was a kid um we used, my brother and I, we used to catch snakes because there were a lot of, uh, where we grew up, you know, now it's all like when we go back to the old house, it, it, there's no, it's not even close to the same, but it used to be like big farm kind of fields and shit behind the house. Now it's all built up subdivisions and stuff, right? But so we'd go catch snakes and, but they, they'd never get, they'd only get like about this long. And there were, we called them garter snakes and they never bit or anything. So it just, you just catch them, you know, scare each other with it and then let it go, you know. Um, so I never really had a snake thing, but those giant snakes, and I was reading tarot cards once in a coffee shop and a uh, guy came in with the giant snake, you know, python or boa constrictor or whatever, hang, you know, wearing it like a coat. <laughs> and, I, I, and he let me try it on. Um, those, you know, but it's funny cause like you look, I don't know if you guys have ever held one of those giant snakes, but I uh, have water moccasins in the summer at your house. Good for you. 
Yay for water. Ah! <laughs> you don't want those, man. Yikes. Yikes. Uh, the water moccasins. Yeah. But yeah, so I have had a twice, I think, worn a snake for a minute. It's like, get it off. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be dealing with a giant snake on my own because you can kind of feel like, and, you know, we've all seen the horror movies. They just kind of come and slowly, next thing you know, you're like strangled or whatever. And yeah, got to watch for those snakes. Oh my God, I got to get rid of this, these bugs, man. Oh, okay. Oh my God, now there's that caterpillar. No, go away. I'm getting rid of all these bugs. Okay, let's go back to the birds of prey. That was better. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm sitting here researching. And uh, oh my God, there's that bee. Fuck off. Okay, I'm <laughs> I got to click all these things away so that later on I'm not like opening up my thing. And it's like, ah! <laughs> but yeah, so apparently Ontario's biggest predator is the moose <laughs> i don't want like a killer moose i mean it might be funny but i don't want my book to be about a killer moose no my my monster like i said is a, a fictional creation of some sort i have written a couple of short stories uh one took place in alberta and it was based on a real dinosaur type creature that had been spotted in alberta back in the early 1900s around 19 uh, around 1920 or so, uh, there had been a few sightings of this creature. It was kind of like a T-Rex-ish kind of uh, creature, and uh, and this is true. Like there 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 were sightings and there's some pictures and stuff. And uh, but you'd think if something like that died, like wouldn't we find it? <laughs> like it, there'd be more than one because how did it get here? And yeah, so I have questions. One of the moose's biggest predators is an orca. Well, we better get that orca swimming through the woods. Yeah. <laughs> we got land orca. You have land shark. Now we got land orca going for the moose. <laughs> the moose. Yeah. But yeah, so there, there, there are rumors of various, you know, in all these uncharted areas of Canada, like way up north. That's why I'm setting my story way up north, where mysterious crap. Only I'm, this particular book that I'm working on today, it's northern Ontario. But like I was saying, the story I wrote, uh, it was, I think it was, uh, I think the book was Amazing Monsters. It just came out a couple of years ago. Um, so that one, it really was based on a true story of a dinosaur type thing that people were seeing in Alberta for about 50 years and then they didn't see it anymore. So like I, but I'm always like, like go, go look for it. <laughs> but Alberta is pretty big. And uh, yeah. And then, um, you know, there's a the whole Loch Ness, Loch Ness monster stuff. And then in Canada, we have something called the Ogopogo, which is kind of like our Canadian Loch Ness monster. Uh, that was cited for a while, but hasn't been cited in years and years. But again, like, wouldn't you think the body would float to the surface or a couple of bones, even if something ate it or whatever? Like, so weird. Because, you know, there's got to be, like, some of these giant things. You know, I, I don't think as big as King Kong, maybe. But <laughs> we might notice King Kong. But maybe not. Because, you know, the northern, there's still, like, a lot of territory that, you know, unexplored or undiscovered or um, whatever, you know, you just don't know. You have skinwalkers and that's enough. <laughs> yeah. Yepper. <laughs> have you seen one? I'm trying to find a picture for those that may not know. Ooh, there's a... Depends how you want to imagine it because they're shapeshifters. But you hear the coyotes at night. We got a lot of coyotes here too in the city. 
I know it sounds crazy. Skinwalker Ranch is a grift. <laughs> Terror of the Skinwalker. Navajo Skinwalkers. I'll put this picture up for those who might be peeking in and don't know what we're talking about. Okay. Skinwalkers. Yeah, even like I live in an apartment in a city, but even in the field across the street, when people have been walking their dogs, they've seen the coyotes. It's probably skinwalkers too. Who knows? <laughs> we got it all here in Ontario. <laughs> all right, let's see how you like this skinwalker picture. There. That's what, uh, there's so many images, but that might be good for someone who doesn't quite understand. The idea with a skinwalker is they can, you know, it's kind of like a werewolf or whatever they can. I like this picture. This is a cool picture. I'll, I'll put this one up too. Um, I don't know a lot about the lore of the skinwalker. Well, they're saying this one's a medicine man, so I might be um, showing things that aren't true. When I googled Skinwalker, this picture came up, but maybe it's not true. Uh, this is a cool picture, though. I'm just about, let me just grab it here. You think you're petting the family dog, then boom, it stands up on two legs and starts two legs and starts walking. <laughs> yeah, that could be disconcerting, huh? <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, okay, where's this guy? So they have this picture. Um, when I googled skinwalker, this picture came up, but they're saying it's a medicine man. So that might be his outfit, maybe to get rid of skinwalkers, or maybe he becomes one to heal other people. I don't know a lot about how skinwalkers uh, work. I, I don't know a lot about the lore. <laughs> but I think that's a really cool picture, regardless. Yeah, isn't it? I can't get it. Yeah. A lot of detail. I really like that. That's really cool. Oh, what's this picture? Oh, that's from TV. In the Wendigo and Skinwalkers. Yeah, I'm not writing about the Wendigo. That's a cool Skinwalker picture. Ooh, that's gross. Um, here's another werewolf type one. There it is. That one's 
pretty much what I feel like uh, like I think of when I think of skinwalkers is that kind of image but what do you have? Supernatural episode that legit scared you was about the Wendigo. Yeah. <laughs> Wendigos are creepy, man. They are. That's, I think that's why I didn't want to put the picture up. They scare me, man. Those Wendigos. I mean, I know I'm a horror writer, but I get freaked out, which is why I write about it. Yeah, <laughs> It's the whole point, isn't it? Yikes. Therapy. See this? Oh, I'm going to show you this picture. Okay. See, this is, uh, whoops, I haven't put it up yet. This, this kind of picture scares me more than all of the pictures. I don't know if it's the horns. I don't know if it's its hands, but I see this kind of picture, which is, I think is a Wendigo. And, uh, that scares, that, I, that thing coming at me in the night. No, man. Even in the daytime, that'd probably be worse. I don't even know what would be worse. But yeah, no. <laughs> I don't want to see that thing coming out. No way, man. Ah. Horror writers have too much power. Stephen King ruined clowns for life. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people got the clown thing. That's for sure. But I have to say, like, it's funny. Uh, I never had... A fear of clowns. I'm, I'm afraid of birds. Um, so it's funny to me to see people so afraid. But I do get, you know, I can get creeped out, you know, like if a clown, like a, it's supposed to be like a child's party clown or whatever, and they're staring at you too long or there's something just not quite right, you know? Yeah. I totally get the creepy clown thing. And then I love to watch Modern Family and I love the whole Cam's whole shtick of the clown and all the, you know, how they, do a lot of the touchstones with people's fears of clowns or people think clowns are ridiculous or it's not even a thing or whatever. <laughs> oh, you watched it when you were four. Yeah. Yeah. I, I read the book when it came out and uh, yeah. And then the first, I never actually saw the new one yet. Um, probably because I know the story so well. So I'm not, I'll probably watch it at some point, you know, on Netflix or whatever. And, but yeah, the first time around, um, I think I was a teenager, maybe early 20s, when that first rant with Tim Curry as the clown um, TV series or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was that whole, oh, and you learned about Patches and Pogo the Clown. Yeah. And then American Horror Story. Uh, my favorite season is uh, the Killer Clown season. Um, actually, they have clown motifs in it, several of the seasons. Uh, but I'm thinking a freak show where, you know, it's an actual circus and the, I love circuses and all that shit. I didn't feel like they totally did what they could with that. Well, uh, American Horror Story is the whole, um, really good moments and really stupid moments. And why is it always so uneven? <laughs> is my question. Why? Why is it always so uneven? Um, but yeah, the, my favorite, all time favorite character in any of the American Horror Stories is dandy uh dandy mott and then he becomes a killer clown right after uh the other one and then yeah and then uh about what was it about seven or eight years ago there was that whole around halloween uh, there was all this stuff going on about clowns in the neighborhoods like the people would be just walking around and then there's clowns just standing there staring at them or <laughs> That's creepy. That's creepy. Yeah, there is something weird, but uh, I don't. I don't know. Ventriloquist dolls might be creepier than clowns. I'm not sure, because actually, it's the ventriloquist. Vent, can I speak ventriloquist? <laughs> they might be creepier than the than the doll because 
they're the psychos using the dolls <laughs> and expressing their innermost thoughts when they think we don't know it's them. <laughs> I don't know. There's a whole thing about ventriloquists. I, I actually have a few stories about ventriloquists and ventriloquist dolls and stuff. Because I love magic, the circus, all that stuff. So I often revisit those ideas. But yeah, my monsters in this particular book that I'm working on. Well, that I'm talking about working on. But I'm, not, I'm apparently not typing right now. Um, but yeah, it'll have a creature like that friggin the skinwalker hunt picture there with the horns and the red and the the man creature horns moose thing I think it's the horns because they're so huge you know and, and the hands I don't know all of it all of it scares me <laughs> you you know the bee might scare you the worm might scare you but to me it's that thing that doesn't even exist in real life it's scaring me <laughs> And then uh, John Wayne Gacy, I guess, is a, uh actual killer clown, right? <laughs> he was the serial killer. Um, you have a theory that there once was a predator that looked like us. Because we're so afraid of humanoids. Yeah. It's a good theory. That's, I think that's why whenever people write about aliens and stuff, like Close Encounters or whatever, um, the aliens always look humanoid. There's no reason why they should when you think about it. Or even be our height. Or they might be, like, ginormous. They might be tiny. They, why would they have two arms and two legs? Like, why? <laughs> that's just how we we evolved. But it doesn't mean aliens from other planets and ships that, you know, we see, visualize, or maybe we can't, our brains can't comprehend what machines they fly in. So we see it as a flying saucer or a ripple in time or a rocket ship or whatever you're thinking of that day. Because there are different types of machines that fly in the air, UFOs, whatever you want to call them. Um, but maybe our mind can't even understand what they are. So we kind of our brain will visualize it into a flying saucer or something because we can't comprehend what we're seeing. Well, not, not necessarily me personally seeing a flying saucer because I don't think I've ever seen one. I'd like to. I believe that there's something happening out there. But yeah, why, why do these things look like us? I, I don't think they would. They'll they look like that Wendigo thing. Yeah, <laughs> no, but they won't look like that. That's humanoid, right? But I think that uh, you're but you're on to something there, Clutch Cat, about us being afraid of that which is like us but not. Hey, cousin Catnip, how you doing? <laughs> we're talking about uh, we're talking about creepy things and Wendigos and that's putting up bees and worms and scary things. Where <laughs> it's just been crazy. How was your stream? And uh, yeah, so. Actually, we got some cats because we got Cousin Catnip and Clutch Cat. So we got it. We're meowing all over the place. <laughs> yeah. So let's see this big creepy where it says Skinwalker Hunt. I was just saying that, that that's scary, man. And then we're talking about uh, Skinwalkers. So this is another. These are Skinwalkers as well. Um you, today was Mario 10 day, so you did all Mario stuff. Yeah, I peeked in a little bit before I came on. It looked like a lot of fun. <laughs> it looked like a lot of fun. Yeah, so this this one is... Uh, these are skinwalkers, these two wolf-type things. Although the one does have a label that it's a medicine man, so we were trying to figure out if it's a medicine man uh, trying to cure the skinwalker... Um, like to prevent skinwalking <laughs> or whatever. Oh, now my phone's going off, but it's, ah, I don't want to talk to that person. But yeah, so we're just, because I need a creature for my story. I'm working on a book about, and it has a big monster in Northern Ontario. So how I started down this rabbit hole was just, uh, I was just trying to figure out what is the biggest predator in Ontario. And apparently it's the moose. <laughs> 
who knew? I thought it'd be something crazy. You know, we're looking at condors and eagles and all this stuff. And and now we're into the fantasy of the skinwalkers and wendigos and stuff like that. (laughs) Yeah, and then uh, um, we were talking about that the orca is the natural... (laughs) The natural predator of the moose. <laughs> and so uh, I was saying, okay, I'll have an orca like going through the woods like a land shark, but it's land orca. Get the moose. <laughs> Car versus moose. Yeah. 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 So that's what's happening here. Just uh, got super sidetracked down the rabbit hole with all these creepy, creepy. Well, it's not sidetracked because I'm, this is actual research. This is my job, you know. Oh, here's a, for those that are new or, this is also a skinwalker up here. I'll make it bigger so you can see it. So it's kind of like, because skinwalkers are almost kind of like werewolves. So they, they take other skins. So it's humanoid, but then like it could be a wolf or, <laughs> what was the joke earlier somewhere? Where was it? It was too funny. Oh, yeah. Clutch Cat said, you think you're petting the family dog, then boom, it stands up on two legs and starts walking. <laughs> That's it. And That's a skinwalker in a nutshell. <laughs> so that's how that, that goes. Yeah. And, uh, oh, boy. And what, there's another one I wanted to show. Where is it? Oh, this thing, too, is gross. Okay. It's going to show another one. Hey, thanks for the follow. Can't see the name because I have too many things on my screen. <laughs> okay, what was I just putting up? Just give me one second. I've almost got it. Oh, too many things. Too many things. Oh, there it is. Okay. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Okay, here's another. This one's very fake. Well, they're all fake. It doesn't exist. (laughs) Here's another skinwalker. (laughs) How how creepy is this thing? This is a real one that they caught in the woods. (laughs) A real skinwalker. Look at him. Look at him posing for the camera with his, ah, I'm going to get you. <laughs> Obviously someone in a costume, but, but that's, again, the creepy skinwalker situation. <laughs> I'll skinwalker all the time. Yikes. yikes a <laughs> You don't like that one? <laughs> uh, should I make it bigger again for a second? You can... Take it all in, all its deliciousness. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that just wonderful? Look at his feet. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got skinwalkers on my channel. We got wendigos. We had killer bees. Oh, oh I think everyone's seen that one. That's an oldie. I'm gonna. No, I just want to look for one or two more because there's this giant page of these guys. But they all look the same, so maybe not. Yeah, they're just showing most. This page is mostly just showing book covers, and and most of the skin. It looks like all the skinwalkers are wolves on here. Are skinwalkers wolves always? Ew. Okay, here's here's something. I've seen this picture before, but it's if you're if you want a nightmare. Here here's a nightmare for you. If you're looking for a nightmare. Wait. 
Why did it do that? Save image as. Oh my God. I downloaded it instead of saved it. Sorry. <laughs> is it is dogs and wolves? Yeah. Okay. So I was, I don't know a lot about uh, the, the Skinwalker um, stories. So, and I, I often see them as wolves, but I didn't know if they always have to be a wolf. Okay, where's this soup? This, this creepy thing. Where is it? Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Well, that one's a, hang on, I have to save it again. It didn't work. Oh, I see what happened. 